the negative effects of debt. Almost everyone knows what it feels like to be behind on paying bills and concerned about having enough money in their accounts to cover all their bills at the end of the month. A few people know what it feels like to have borrowed money and not have enough money to repay the loan when it falls due. Some don't. People who are going through debt deal with a lot more than unpleasant calls and worrying about how to repay the debt. There are other negative effects of debt. Being in debt can affect your goals. Debt can cause you to put a hold on your dreams and aspirations. Debt will cloud your mind with worry and rob you of the ability to plan. To work on your goals, you require focus and an enabling state of mind to plan and execute the plans. Being in debt can negatively affect your credit score. In other countries, a bad credit score will affect your ability to rent a house, get a credit card, and you would also pay higher interest on future loans. In Nigeria, however, a bad credit score will stop you from getting a loan from any bank unless you totally liquidate the bad loan. So if you're an entrepreneur, a bad credit score can affect your business should your business require a loan to expand. Being in debt can also affect your personal relationships. It can cause marital problems, arguments with children, and lost friendships. In some instances, you lose the trust of your family and friends. Being in debt can affect your health, both physical health and your mental health. You may gain weight or lose weight. It can cause you to slip into depression and lose control. Being in debt will rob you of your peace and can cause you to lose sleep. You can be constantly in a state of worry and anxiety, trying to figure out ways to repay your debt. How do you get out of this negative debt cycle? Stop all borrowing. Track your spending. Stop all spending on non-essential items and start thinking of where to make cuts. Be prepared to make lifestyle changes. Instead of shopping in your neighborhood, consider buying foodstuff in bulk from the markets. Before you buy anything, ask yourself if this is a need or simply a want. Spend less on wants and more on needs. Start to budget. Identify how much you need for all your expenses monthly. Compare it to your monthly earnings and then adjust your lifestyle. Stick to the budget that you have made. Look for ways to increase your income. Look for a better paying job or start a side hustle to augment your income. It may be easier to earn an extra 20,000 Naira from a side business than it is to reduce your spendings by 20,000 Naira, especially if the issue is low income rather than frivolous spending. Practice gratitude and contentment. Both will help you keep away from debt. Focus on what you have and save for what you want. This will help you avoid debt and its negative effects. <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, I think I would love to talk more about it. You know, beyond, um, you are actually right, completely right about saying it's over cloud, your thinking, your ways of life, it hurts your dream, you know, your plannings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but um, Again, you look at uh, debt in another perspective, just like you said, it's cut short in Nigeria because you, you see predominantly the borrowers don't even understand, you know, that's why I'm talking about capitalists. Mm -hmm. They're just about, I'll give you this money. I already have a projection that you lose this loan, 100 million naira, I want also 120 million at the end of the year. That is their interest. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear. If you are defaulting, it's even a plus to them because they will be putting more penalty, more Your money for them. Interest. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we have a system where they don't care about the customer. They do as if they care, but they don't actually care. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it compared to the United States that you made mention of, it actually gives you more of uh, uh, less access to certain facilities like incentive, mm -hmm. you know, that you enjoy. 
So if you are you are entitled to like 10 incentive, it reduces it to like let's say five, four, depending on your default rate. Oh, yes. That's because that's interesting. At least you have mm -hmm. I, you know, if you say stop, I'm looking at it from a businessman. Stop or borrowing. My business is odd. How do I generate money? You, you understand? So, so, yeah. So I, I think if it is a little bit deeper than that. Mm. Okay. I think the, the, the fundamental problem mm. is ignorance. Mm. So ask an average 10 or 15 year old what they know about credit and debit. Mm. They have no clue. Mm. All they have is it's the, the mathematics they taught them in school. Mm. So mm. if you don't understand this fundamentally, that's why a lot of people get in debt, you know, you see a lot of suicide, you see the suicide rates going up. You see, you know, the state of, you know, happiness, you know, happiness index, or, which was going to talk about the misery index, happiness index going down. Because people have gotten themselves in holes that they had no idea how they got in mm -hmm. or have no idea how they will come out. Mm -hmm. It's because they don't have education. Mm -hmm. Right? So I think it goes deeper than that. It, it, it must, the, this education must start from early years. Mm -hmm. yes. Ask an average 18 year old American. They know exactly mm -hmm. yes. the kind of debt they should take, mm -hmm. they know how long it takes them to pay it, they know the percentage they are going to pay. They have all that information. So that's the problem we have these days. Like you said, like many things in, in Nigeria or even Africa. Mm -hmm. The people that are in charge of it are more in, interested in punishing you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like the average policeman. The average policeman wants you to take one way so that he can give you, in Nigeria, they don't even give tickets. <laughs> the average, you know, so so, so when, the use of, when the use of something is mm -hmm. not known, abuse mm -hmm. is, 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 is inevitable. It's inevitable. Yes. Exactly. So, so, so I think that's what why the Why I is. say yes. stop all boring. Mm -hmm. It's not stop all boring forever. It's just that if you're in debt, you're already in a hole. The easiest way to get out of the hole is to stop digging. If you keep borrowing, you keep digging this hole. Mm. Even if you're a business person, it's imperative that you take some time away from borrowing, actively borrowing, and look at the situation. How do I get out of it? What are the steps that I need to take? What are the things that I need to do? to mm. help me get out of debt first. Mm. So stop all borrowing so that you can assess the situation. Mm. I'm not saying you would never borrow. Yeah. Because but for now, stop. Yeah, because I think also there's, I mean, there's good, if you ask finance people, they will tell you there's good debt and there's bad debt. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Right? Yeah, what is happening is there's so much bad debt. Mm -hmm. And the cause for bad debt is ignorance. We're back to the ignorance question. So even the average businessman does not realize how much they need to borrow for what. Mm -hmm. So you see the average businessman gets a $100 million loan. Half of it is used to buy a Range Rover. Mm. You see what I'm saying? It's the so wrong utilization. It's the wrong utilization. And most people fall victim of this. Most entrepreneurs, you're an entrepreneur. Yes. You, in fact, some even get grants. Yeah. You've gotten a grant for your business, mm. but they won't apply it how they went to the investors and you know portrayed what the money was going to be utilized for. Exactly. But once the money hits the account, they remember, oh, <laughs> then was there some so, loud, loud spending involved. Exactly. So, you know, you know uh, but another thing you should also look at it, probably because I'm into business, is, you know, we have asset and liability, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it can, you can buy a Range Rover, it can be an asset, and it can also be a liability. You know, a Range we, Rover we, can never be. There's no, be there's no way in a, finance or business because a Range Rover where, will lose value the day you drive it so, out. Of so, the, shop. the reason why I said it can be an asset, yeah. I, will, I will justify that. Fantastic. Right? Yeah. We, we are actually in in a country where you are actually giving privilege to have access to some form of contract, some form of business deal. The way you look, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. you understand. So if I, if I if I if I if I drive a Range Rover and I have a business dream, right? And uh, the business dream is to that can generate probably times ten of the money I borrow. But I sound like okay, if I have a Range Rover, I'm like okay, how much is this Range Rover? It is forty million naira. If you give this person this project of two hundred million, this person cannot run away with our money, mm -hmm. right? It tends to win in some cases, right. and the pay sentence. off the debt. So yes. as at that time, that is not a liability. It's actually yeah. an asset. Right? So, it, depends on, it depends on the perspective so, so and understanding of the environment. I, I totally agree with you to make sense. Yeah, there's a valid point where, mm. and that again just speaks to the, you know, the poverty of intellect of exactly. our society. Exactly. Mm. Because the day you begin mm. to judge a man by the car he drives, there's mm -hmm. a big problem that you have. Exactly. Unfortunately, exactly. that's how people are judged. Yes. So exactly. you see someone with an empty head, 
but it goes in with the Range Rover and you judge him because he drives the Range Rover. That's the reason why people get into more debt. Exactly. This person is an empty head and he has driven <laughs> to you with the, with the Range Rover. Then you give him 250 million because he's driving a 40 million Range Rover. Then the man has no way to reproduce that Range Rover. Yes. For the man that has capacity, <laughs> He doesn't mm -hmm. need a Range Rover to prove that he has capacity. Sure. Mm -hmm. If he goes in there he and he gets into that meeting, many times, you know, many times, I mean, there's so many people. Like she said, there's so many people that have gotten grants. I mean, professors in universities, they get millions of dollars in grants for research and things like that. They don't drive Range Rovers. But I totally understand what you mean in terms mm -hmm. of there are times where, image as a businessman, there's image that is required for you to portray, mm -hmm. to show mm -hmm. your capacity, mm -hmm. to show your exactly. capability. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we have a system where there is no, you know, there's no design. There's no framework that allows you to judge someone properly. Exactly. In many instances, these guys, after they're in Range Rover, they still have to pay a lot. Even from the, from the loan, mm -hmm. they have to settle people from that loan. Mm -hmm. And you know that it's impossible for this person to take a 250 million naira loan. He has settled with 100 million naira. You must ask yourself, that 100 million that he has settled with, I how is he going pay. to recover it? Exactly. Thank you. You know? Then from there, he buys the newest Range Rover to get another loan, another 500 million naira loan. And this is how people get, you know, dig and she, like she says, dig yourself deeper so into, into, into I, I think another thing we should also be looking at is more of companies who buy over loans, right? Where, um, it, depending on the, the liability uh, coffer. So for average individual, you see that it's more of a basic, just like you said, poverty is there, mm -hmm. is deep, right? Mm -hmm. It's basic, how do I eat? Mm -hmm. yeah. You understand? And some people are not aware, ignorance of knowledge, or what they can do with their potential. Right, there are, uh, we need to have buy over companies for normal basic people to say, okay, what is your liability portfolio? Is on a thousand, okay? You have this ability, if you can do so so job, so so job that will of take, right? Will pay you after then reducing it gradually, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's another way we can also look at it because if you look at it, another thing we can also do is more of cooperatives and and what have you that we have today. Basic low man, they do. Uh, daily contribution, monthly contributions to cooperative, to a susu, a joy, and all those kind of things, mm -hmm. right? You can actually, because they, trans they transact in cash, so data is lost, which is a great value. Mm -hmm. By the time you begin to buy over the loan, you understand their activities, you understand community financing, and see, okay, if Mr. A and Mr. B, this is your stuff, you start monitoring yeah. each order, mm -hmm. right? If you don't return this one, this person will not be able to, in to a take, cluster, to yeah? take That's this. How. So with that, you are buying over the loan, restructuring them systematically, and getting things better. Because if you say a man that doesn't even have any, he has borrowed to the tune of 100,000 on all those I pay 30% per, it's crazy out there. 30% per month, uh, yeah. individual just to eat, and on 10,000 there, you pay almost like uh, uh, 13,000 or 15,000. There's, there's, also, the issue, there's also the issue yes, of regulation, exactly. Days. Regulation is also very important yes. because right. many times industries that are not regulated have a way of just you know going haywire. Mm -hmm. So, clearly, so I feel first regulation. Secondly, FinTel, financial intelligence, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's very important. It's very important, important that is from, yes. from 50 mm. years ago. You know, exactly. we're already 50 years late. <laughs> yeah, we should be educating, yeah, sure. you know, our children, educating our people, educating the adults. Mm. We must include, I think this advocacy is to include financial intelligence in the school curriculum. Yeah. I think know, it, from, it is from actually, it's actually yeah. included, but um, the, the, the sad part of it is those who are teaching it are not practical. You can't give what and you don't those have. Who are even those because who, entrepreneurship those has been introduced during the Jonathan's only, era yeah, but into all tertiary institutions. Not for everyone. Into all further tertiary institutions, entrepreneurship is a must course that you have to take. I've okay. never heard about that. I've never heard. I don't think that, that was. I don't, I'm not sure that was executed. I, doing ask. no, it was executed. You can go to any university. You see entrepreneurship yeah, for modern level like intro, a G, like a general. In, exactly, in general. everybody. Yes, everybody okay. takes never, it. I'm sure. They even, they, there is even an allocation of resources in million, hundreds of millions to build an entrepreneurship center across the federal institutions in Nigeria really? by Jonathan administration. Really? So that's, that's what we are actually saying. You know, we have people who are the arms of affairs in this kind of structure who do not even understand business because they have not practically been part of business. Mm -hmm. They are just teaching theory yeah, and it's difficult to actually yeah. uh, you know impart a knowledge of direct market response 
to understanding the process. Mm. So it's still theory, theory, theory. I mean, theory. the problem is, like, most of the curriculums are there. Are outdated. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I've, I've, I'm sure I've interviewed over 100 candidates in the past maybe five years. And I mean, when I heard anybody say, oh, they studied entrepreneurship with anything about they, it. Someone says they study biz admin. And I asked them, throughout your four years of studying biz admin, mm. did you ever administer any business? <laughs> did you ever meet an entrepreneur that told you, you know, so you say, so, I mean, business, business administration, but you've never in one, in four years, you know, so being told we, to administer a business. So how do you come out as a four years, go for youth service, you are there looking for, you know, bank job? That, that, know. There is a lot. I mean, and education has to be re-strategized. Be overhauled. Absolutely. It's really you understand? Overhauled. Because overhauled yes. from the Guardian yeah. and Counseling, we have people who are actually uh, studying course that because my dad, my mom said I oh, should yeah. go and study oh, yeah, doctor. Yeah. So that they have don't no have that passion. They don't have that study. ability mm -hmm. and what have you, you know. You know, education is expected to go there, acquire knowledge that you use to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. But right now, we are having dogmatism where you just come and pour. Mm -hmm. You have people for class, to have that you have first class yes. who just don't have, have anything have no to clue. offer. Mm -hmm. Yes, You understand? Mm -hmm. So we have 80% of Nigerian graduates uh, who are unemployable because practically they are not there. Absolutely agree. And it's be it becoming so difficult, yeah. you know. Yeah. So that education is very... Mm -hmm. uh, Imperative. Mm -hmm. So Lu Moya will be talking about Newton's law of politics. Each one must move one to end voter apathy. Mm -hmm.